This is stacks and foundation here. Let's go back to elements. Boom, there it is. Hello and welcome to this special video. Now this video is aimed at those of you that are still using stacks and specifically foundation and are wondering what elements is all about and how could you migrate your site from using Rapid Weaver Classic, Stacks and Foundation, how could you migrate that over to Elements? And what are the differences? Why is everyone raving about Elements? So right now in front of me, I have this older um, looking site. This is built with Foundation. And as you can see, if you've used these Stacks frameworks, you'll be familiar with this look, um, this kind of gridded look and it not really looking like the website you're building. So let's, before we dive in, let's just have a quick look at how this site actually looks. So I'm gonna preview it in the browser and it's like a coming soon launch website. Um, it's made by Foundation Box. Now they do a lot of great product uh, projects. They're all for foundation. And what you'll notice is when I go back to here, it doesn't look anything like it. It's, um, it looks completely different. And things are very different in Elements. But before I dive in and show you Elements, we'll just look at changing a couple of things in this website. So here we want to change the blue background and we might want to change the weight of this font. And to do that, we kind of have to look through and work out. I mean, I can't even see the background image here. We need to work out um, where the background image is set. And I, I've had a look at this before and I know it's set in the container and they've had to set a class. So this is very old fashioned. Um, and very complex like to get into. If you don't know anything about web design, this is completely uh, off limits. This is very tough to get into. But to change the, um, so we could change the background color. We'd have to look up here in these site styles as they call them and change it there. And by poking around in this project, I know this little class here, the background overlay, the body before, this is where we set the the, um, the color, but it's not quite where we set the color because we need to look for secondary and we'd have to go for that up here. So secondary up here, and then we could change this color, but we change the color. I can't even see what um, change that is. I have to go back over to the browser and preview it to see that change. And again, the same with the font. Um, if I wanted to change the weight of this font here, it's got these random classes applied and I'd have to go and find it up here and I can change it here. Uh, so, cause I've already looked at this, I know where it is, 600, uh, go up there, then go to preview, boom, there it is. It's changed it. So we've changed our background color and we've changed the weight of this font. Now, this is really not intuitive. Um, and it's an absolute world away from the way Elements works. So this is Stacks and Foundation here. So let's jump over and see what a very similar site would look like in Elements. So here we are, I've hopped over to Elements um, and you might be forgiven for thinking, mistaken, for thinking that this is actually the preview when it's not, this is the editor. So we can see our website live in here and we can just change the settings. If I want to change the weight of this font, I just select it and then I've got all my settings down here and I can just change it and I can see that change live. This is incredible. This is the way it should be. Um, so let's just hop back to classic and stacks and look at and just to remind ourselves, this is how you would do it. It doesn't even look like the website. Let's go back to elements. Boom, there it is. We want to change the background image or background color on here. We can do that. Um, let's go ahead and to my resources. I've got some resources here and I've selected this container and we'll click on background and there's our background image and we can just drag and drop another one in there and it live updates so we can see this. This is really cool stuff. And if I wanted to do a background overlay, there's an option here and let's set it to static and there, I can see this live. Look at that changing live. It's absolutely incredible. And it's the way things should work. Really nice. And if I wanted to change this text, um, I can just type in here like this. Our new website is on the way. And you can highlight this and um, we can change font sizes on, um, on single text items or colors, you know, like this. Really easy. Um, really nice and we can add animation to this as well so on here we've got this blurry effect 
And what I can do is um, we want to change the effect when we hover into it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to go to the filter and this is where we're setting this background blur effect, which is really nice. And obviously what with um, liquid glass, you know, the new Apple style in the OS, this is gonna become very popular. So you'll see a lot of these uh, kind of interface elements around. So you can see here, I can just change the number and we can change the blur on this. So let's set this to a low blur, just something like three. And then on hover, let's increase it to 10. So now when I hover into this, you can see the blur effects. But let's make this animate as well. Let's get the this box to animate. And here we can go to transform and we want to set it to hover. So this is gonna transform when I hover into it. We'll set the start state and the end state and let's scale this up a little bit. We can go to, uh, let's go to scale 110. So now when I hover in, or maybe we'll set that to 105, a little bit less. Let's go and preview this in the browser. And here's our website. And you can see now we've just added that little bit of animation in there and it's really easy to do. And we changed the background color. This is all visual, so easy to do. I've got some social icons up here. And again, these are really easy to work with. You just select them uh, and I can duplicate that. Boom, we've got another one. And I can easily update this. I've uh, element ships with some icons so let's get some social icons so say uh, maybe I've got a blue sky account so we'll just drop that in there and now that's blue sky and I've just added that into my list and I can change it and you can drag these things around um, and you can see even in the editor this is animating it's absolutely wild and to remind ourselves of the difference let's just hop back to classic this is how if you're currently using stacks and foundation this is how you're building sites absolute madness um, this used to be good 10 years ago I don't know how um, how people are still using this not when there are options like this available where everything is so um, easy to use and just so responsive now if you are coming from foundation and you wondering where to start let me create a new project in elements and you can see with these free projects here you can start with one of these free projects just to have a poke around see how it's put together or you can start with an empty project like i've done now boom open straight away and these are your pages here so let's just call this uh, let's just call this home then we've got our resources in here and as i said elements ships with a bunch of useful resources in there ready to go and it also ships with all the components you need, really powerful components. There's everything like layouts, images, videos, galleries, grids, flexes, uh, modal boxes, filters, drop downs, accordions. It's all built in a complete form suite so you can um, send forms and to webhooks. It's really powerful. Buttons, text, typography. We've even got a CMS in development that's based on Markdown. Really powerful stuff animation it's all there so these are the raw building blocks but if we come across one more to here these are the templates and this allows us to build up a site really quickly now we're still expanding this out and there'll be a lot more of these available from us and third parties but let's quickly build a page and now I want a sticky menu so I'm going to drop that in boom there's our menu and you can see it's already got our home page on there if I quickly go back here Let's just add one more page and oops, let me just drop that back in. Let me add one more page and we'll call this contact. So you can see when you add pages, they just appear at the top there. Now let's go ahead and add a banner image. Boom, there it is. Now these are all editable. I can drag these around, add more items, change it, you know, really easy stuff. Uh, we can add a two column in and let's add some features. Boom, just like this. And these are all customizable. I can just come in here, change the color really quick. Um, duplicate the items, expand them out, really quick stuff. Uh, let's drop in some feature cards down here just to show you this working. And we'll drop in a big footer down the bottom. This is looking really nice already. So we're already building this page up. Uh, let's drop in a, oh, I don't want a newsletter. Let's drop in a contact form. Boom, there's a contact form. And I can easily customize this, add more items, get it looking exactly how I want. Um, FAQ, let's drop that in. Boom, there it is. Let's go and preview this in the browser. So you see how quick we've built up this page and I could go through here and just customize the items in the images to how I want. 
This is a full, fully working uh, accordion FAQ, easy to do. Uh, we've got a form there and a footer, and this was all really quick to put together. So there's a page already, um, and then we could come in here, just customize it however we like. Now, a good thing to remember, we also support globals and globals are really powerful and this allows you to use and share components across your entire site. So you'd want to do that for like a menu um, and you'd also probably want to do it for a banner image as well. So let's convert both of these into globals. And once you've converted them into globals, you'll see them in the components list. So let's go ahead and swap to our contact page, which is currently blank. And we'll pop in the sticky menu there. So um, it's shared across pages and let's drop in this banner image. Now this banner image, um, if I change this background image on here, it will change across my entire site. So let's put in a new image and you'll see when I change between the home and the contact, it's the same, but Quite often you want a customized image on each different page, which is fair enough. And that's really easy to do. What we'll do in here, these little links on a global, we can break the link to the global uh, just for this value, just for this and say, well, I want a different image on here. Let's go with blue. And now when I click between these two, you can see the is using a unique image for each page which is really good. And we can do the same thing with text. If I change the text on here, um, let's, let's get rid of this, we want this to white. If I change the text on here, it changes across my entire site, which is not always what you want. And what we can do, we can override the text. So let's do that and I can say, this is my, whoops, this is my contact page, contact us. Boom, and now uh, when I click between the two pages, you can see it's custom content. So already we're building up a two page site here with customized um, content. So maybe, you know, we wanna come down here uh, and we will take our contact form. Let's cut that out of the page and I will paste it onto this page. So now we've got this two page site working, customize the content, then we can just publish it really quick. So this is a great way to get started in Elements and start playing around and start building out your site. Um, the other option, you can obviously do a new project and you can pick one of our free built-in projects. I'm going to pick this North 11 one. It's downloading it from our marketplace live directly into Elements. Boom, there it is. And I've got this entire portfolio website ready to go. And I can just customize the content, add new pages, really simple stuff like it's just really powerful lovely way to work and you can see how quick this all is and um, so if you are still using stacks and foundation you've really got to give elements a try because it is the future of rapid weaver this is and it's moving at such a fast pace there's new features every week dev diaries you really want to get in on this and give it a whirl let's just jump back to rapid weaver classic with the stacks plugin and remember how you used to build websites. Nobody wants to build websites like this. This is not the future. Elements is the future. So give it a whirl. If you've got any problems or any questions about this, please hop on to the uh, Real Mac forum and ask them there. They're, we're always around to help. Lots of passionate Elements users on there as well, which will help you migrate your site or if you've got any questions on how to do things. Lots of activities we have dev diaries every week, like video dev diaries, so you can see what's new in Elements. We also ship new builds of Elements at least once a week. Sometimes there's two or three new builds a week. Always new features, bug fixes going in. It's really active and a really exciting time to start using Elements. So that's it for this video. I hope that's given you an overview of the differences of working in Classic and trying to work like this on building a website to the difference of when you move to Elements and working in a true WYSIWYG modern environment. All right, thanks for watching this one and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, bye.